Hey everyone, welcome to Toto Santos. In this series, I'm going to be building a Puerto Rican inspired city. Uh, and as you can see here, the uh, terrain from the map is taken from the San Juan area. And we're gonna start by focusing on this main island here where we're going to build kind of the older side of town, the more European inspired uh, area. And right on the tip of this island here, we're going to be building a Spanish castle. All right, so let's get right into it. So I knew right from the start that I wanted to do this mostly with network assets because doing it with props would just be kind of ridiculous. Uh, working with, you know, multiple levels of terrain and stuff like that would just be, you know, beyond tedious and maybe even impossible to get something that looks good. Um, so I start out with these seawalls and building them up along the edge to kind of make the walled city portion of the build and we're going to fill most of that in later with the uh the old town and this build would not have been possible without the align heights function of move it which i really only started using recently i just kind of ignored it when it came out <laughs> i didn't really understand how it worked um but now i mean it's super simple to use um and it's so incredibly helpful when working with like dozens and dozens of network segments like I'm doing here with these uh, uh, I think they're like a Great Wall of China asset which I'm clipping into the sea walls and so you'll see all these gaps in the walls there um, I do go back later and fill all those in with uh, ploppable pavement and some decals but I didn't really show it because it's kind of boring um, and this is also I wasn't sure whether I should cut this out or not but I think it is really cool to see uh, how versatile the terrain can actually be when you manipulate it with roads like this. Uh, and I also think it's really satisfying to just see all those bulges of terrain disappear. It's great. All right, so I'll let you watch the rest of that and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so now we're getting into the main part of the castle build, and I wanted to start off with this kind of like tiered terrain here, where it's kind of most of the terrain is at one level, and there's just, you know, basically a giant lawn out in front, and then when you actually approach the castle, it drops off a little bit, and you have to cross a bridge to get to the main, the main portion of the, the uh, building. Um, and I just thought that was a cool detail. I noticed that on Google Maps, and I have vague memories of it from actually visiting the, the castle that inspired this in Old San Juan, which is called El Morro. Uh, so I'm not a native Spanish speaker, obviously. Uh, so I do know some Spanish, though, so I'm going to try to do my best with pronunciations like that. But if I get something wrong, uh, let me know, and I'll try to improve my pronunciation in the future. 
So now uh, this looks horrible, I know, but <laughs> I do go back and adjust this. I actually, this is probably like the third or fourth try I did with the kind of the shaping of the main castle area. And yeah, it looks pretty bad at first, but then I go in and give it a more reasonable shape here. Um, and now I had some trouble trying to figure out what I wanted to do up front here with the whether to have it slope up or not and you know, I'll get that all fixed out later but I put this wall here because I need a flat wall for what I'm gonna do in just a couple minutes once I'm done with this part uh, and yeah that plan didn't really work with the the sea walls I was using for most of the walls um, so I'm just flattening this out which of course I go back and change later but it is helpful to see whether or not this wall is level which it isn't of course and you can't really use the align heights function to move it with this kind of wall because um the nodes are just absolutely tiny and they're basically impossible to select so i do this i copy and paste them and raise them up which is a nice function to be able to do that with these network walls but of course i don't stretch them out to cover those gaps there so i need to go back later and do that and i just do that off camera it's pretty boring um, and now I'm creating the bridge that's going over this little sunken area over to the main castle. And this is pretty much the only <laughs> asset I had that was an arch, but I think it looks pretty cool. It's kind of a bummer because it there's like one or maybe two arches on one side and then like three or four on the other. So it doesn't really match side to side, but I think it both sides look pretty good on their own. So I'm okay with it. Now I'm raising up this arch, which eventually will be the doorway. It looks kind of stupid right now, uh, but you'll see later I clip a building in. Yeah, right here. I clip a building in and have the door poke out. So this tower, um, it's a little big. I'm not sure how realistic it is, but I do remember uh, El Moro had a little building kind of like sticking up out of the main part of the castle and it had this like stucco style on the outside. So I decided to use this, which I think is pretty intimidating and impressive. And I feel like that's what, if they had the technology to build a 10 story or whatever stucco building they would have back in the, you know, the 1600s or whenever this would have been made. Um, and now I'm kind of trying to figure out how I want the inside of the castle to look. And I'm using more of the sea walls. Um, and then I want to get it level with the building there so that I don't cover up any of the windows when I eventually put the floor in with ploppable pavement. Uh, so now I'm creating the interior portion of the castle and as cool as these buildings end up looking, I they cause me a lot of trouble. So these buildings as they are in the video you're watching are houses. So people actually, even that arch there is a house. So people actually move in. And of course, you know, when they move in, they require uh, death care and garbage removal and stuff like that and it's kind of hard to get any of that down there so when they you know when someone dies and bodies start piling up and the uh, the graveyards and stuff try to send out hearses and it can't find a path so it just keeps trying and trying and it won't spawn any other hearses to go to any other building. So then all the buildings that actually have road access are, you know, they just are empty and have dead people in them. And it's horrible because I do want to retain some of the vanilla gameplay in terms of actually, you know, managing population, keeping people happy. Um, obviously, if something is super in the way, I'll, I might have to get like the no problems mod or whatever. But for now, I'm going to try to manage it as is. And I do, what I end up doing is converting these to uh, a monument style building. And that way, and then I just, and then I can turn them off uh, so that they don't really have any problems, which is nice. But on the downside, it doesn't attract as many people. I do throw some uh, PPGs or park people generators down in a while. And it does attract some people, but it's not like, you know, a huge tourist attraction like I would want it to be. Um, so now I have these walls here sticking up out of the houses, and I think they look really cool. But one problem I had, well, that's not really a problem, it's just looking back I think I could, I would have done it differently, is um, they don't actually go up all the way to the height of where the floor is, if that makes sense. And so when I end up putting poppable pavement in for the floor, there's like this big gap there, 
and me being dumb filled it all in with props i think just like uh beard monkeys prefab house props or whatever um so that's like that's quite a bit of props and it was quite a bit of work but what i could have just done is raised the seawalls up like you know a couple of uh page ups on move it and that would have been it but so i cut that all out anyway so you don't have to watch any of that but i just thought i'd mention it uh, and i have these staircases here or this staircase and i'm clipping that in there and again i fill in all those gaps off camera because it's pretty boring so i'm imagining like all the access to like the outside and the inside of the castle would be mostly underground or within the walls so you could theoretically enter through the bridge up there and into the tower and then follow some sort of constructed tunnel down to this exit and go out into that uh that green area down there so now i'm putting down all this plopable pavement and again without move it this would be basically impossible align both the line heights and the the uh the little squiggly line there that lets you keep props from following the terrain. Yeah, and so I don't know if you notice that the camera jumping up and down there, but there's something about getting all these, uh, creating all these layers in the terrain that are so close, you know, with pushing the roads in up toward the seawall and stuff like that. It makes the camera jump up and down like that, and it's really horrible to work with. I'm sure it's awful enough to watch, but you know, working on this build for hours with that happening was just not a lot of fun. But it was totally worth it. Other than that, I had tons of fun building this thing. Alright, so now I'm going to start some detailing, and I'll let you watch that, and I'll be back in just a second. Yeah, so I wanted to rotate this statue so he's facing back east toward, you know, northeast toward the, the homeland of Spain. Uh, I thought that was a kind of a cool detail. And now I do the very efficient thing of building like three or four sets of benches and then pushing them back and then copy and pasting some. Instead of just building one thing, pushing it back and then copying and pasting it, but whatever. Uh, so now I put these, uh, I don't know, like balustrades or something like that on here. And that's it's a beautiful asset, but I think I go a little bit overboard here. <laughs> and first of all, some of them don't line up, which is pretty bad. So I have to go back with Move It and fix that. And the ones on the end here, everything's way off there. I do go back and fix that so there's no Z fighting on the building there. And then, of course, I just end up deleting them, and I think that looks a lot better. Yeah, so then to get some more detail, I didn't think the roofs of these buildings looked very good. Uh, so I filled in with some ploppable pavement, so that way I can put decals on top. And I end up putting some cobblestone decal down here in a second. There are lots of good ones on the workshop. They look pretty bright here, uh, but that's because I keep it pretty bright for the gameplay so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, it looks a lot better during the cinematics. And then I realize, of course, I can't put the expansion joint decals on the buildings either. So I just have to copy some more plopable pavement. Always fun. Fill those gaps in. Yeah, so I put these, I think these might even be vanilla assets, but I put those down there. I think they look 
kind of like nice uh, feet for these arches. And again, it bothers me that they don't, there are more arches on one side than the other, but uh, I'm just gonna have to live with it. I think it looks cool. Yeah, and then I'm gonna fill this all in with some poppable grass. Uh, so you really get that, that sheer edge uh, up against the wall. Yeah, so I wanna talk a little bit about what this series is gonna be like. So these first maybe four or five episodes are focused pretty heavy in detail and pretty much all on this old town area. Everything's going to be hand placed. Um, again, lots of detail, filling in every little gap. But then after that, I want to move into the more modern portion of the town, which is going to be most of the city. Uh, and that's going to be, you know, the typical Caribbean city, lots of high rises, um, and there'll be a lot of things you'd find in an American city. Uh, so we're going to get big highways, uh, big highway system, interchanges, uh, lots of parking, <laughs> that kind of stuff, you know. And that's going to be more expansion based. I'm going to detail a lot, but I want to find a good balance of functionality and expansion with this kind of obsessive detailing that I'm doing here. And I really like both. I find it hard actually to not detail. <laughs> So I'll build, like, I'll expand and build this huge area, and then I'll be like, oh, that doesn't look very good. And I end up spending, you know, hours and hours on something no one's ever going to see. Um, so that's kind of, I mean, it's hard to build a big city in this game in a detailed way. But I'm going to try to do it. Uh, so we'll see how that turns out. But yeah. So we're going to start out. If you like detail, I think you'll like these first few episodes a lot. Um, most of it's going to be in a more European style. Um, but with some modern things mixed in, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, at this point I have like four or five episodes worth of footage recorded, so I kind of know the direction it's going to go for, for quite a while. Yeah, so now I'm using, I use this, uh, Ronix's slab decals, I think they're called, or something like that, uh, as kind of a template to make all the expansion joints line up at, uh, at right angles. And of course that all just goes to hell in just about a minute and there aren't really any right angles in this thing at the end but I think they still look pretty cool. Um, yeah I kind of want this to represent like the fact that this castle has been renovated a lot and this wouldn't be the you know they wouldn't have used concrete slabs in the 1600s to to you know create flooring for their castles. So this is something that's happened during the renovation to make it just more accessible and safer and yeah. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, oh yeah, and so I'm putting these stairs in here, and I do that all over on all the gaps in the wall, um, both on the castle and in like the main like walled city area, but I just left most of it off because it's really boring. It's boring to do and boring to watch, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't think I even recorded it. 
Uh, and speaking of the walls, there's pretty much one asset that I didn't have that I really would have liked to have, uh, which is like the the Spanish style sentry boxes. They're like these, they're kind of these vertical tubular like little promontories on the on like the corners of the walls, and you can like go in them and look out the window. They're super cool. Uh, if you visit there, you can go in there, and it's just kind of amazing to be in something that's so old and used to be just completely a functional thing but now it's like this relic and it's just absolutely gorgeous but yeah there weren't really any assets on the workshop for that there's one uh that i think was created for the monaco project which looks great it's like this fort and it has one of those sentry boxes on top but i just couldn't you know use that fort every time i wanted to put just one little sentry box down all right, so now I'm building all this stuff outside the castle, like the big road leading up to it, which is mostly a pedestrian road, but I do let buses and I think like taxis or something go down this. Um, and that roundabout there is how it's connected to the old town, which will be the next episode coming up soon. Um, and there's actually a lot of stuff in this area that I had to leave out of this episode, but I don't really think it's enough to warrant its own episode, so I might do like... In episode 1.5 or something or a little like kind of like a journal episode where I just throw some music on to the video and play the time lapse because um, that way I can still share what I built but not have to subject everyone to like a 45 minute video of me building a castle or something like that I just think that would be a little excessive it was hard enough to cut the build of the castle itself down to 28 minutes or whatever I did um, but yeah, I did have to cut a lot out of the actual castle build itself, too. So yeah, like here I have, you know, I'm detailing this little central area, but off to the sides you can see, I think at least for a second here and there, you can see a couple buildings and there's a statue there. And then on the uh, the south, yeah, the south side of the castle, there's like a, a walkway along the bottom of the castle wall. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I might do like a kind of a half episode on that. I'm using lots of expansion joints. And again, this level of detail is going to be mostly reserved for this old town area and some special projects here and there. For the most part, we're going to try to build a nice looking, but not too prop heavy of a city. I think after like these four or five episodes I've already recorded, I'm at like 18,000 props, which is almost a third of the prop limit. So I'm definitely going to try to cut down um, but yeah, I'm having lots of fun detailing, so I don't want to stop anytime soon. that's really all I have to say for this episode. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about this voiceover. I haven't really done anything like this before, so let me know if you have any tips or suggestions or I don't know if you hated it. Let me know. That's fine. If you want to see more videos in this series, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I upload the next video. All right, I'll catch you later. Bye.